Hello my mappers and welcome to the video. Today we're going to be going over Discipline Equals Freedom, a field manual by Jocko Willink. Now this book I believe is filled with a lot of timeless wisdom taught to us by a guy that not only talks the talk but also walks the walk. So if you're having trouble with discipline in your life and you want a little bit more freedom or perhaps you're just a big fan of Jocko and want to dimensionalize some of his teachings a little bit more this book's going to be perfect for you. Now, perhaps you don't know who Jocko is, and if that's the case, let me quickly introduce him to you. He's a 20-year Navy SEAL veteran who led the most decorated spec ops unit in the Iraq War. He's also the best-selling author of Extreme Ownership, which I've done a video of on this channel. I recommend that you check it out. The Way of the Warrior Kid, which is a children's book, and The Dichotomy of Leadership, which is an amazing book all about leadership. I also recommend Jocko's podcast called The Jocko Podcast. He has all available on the App Store and even here on YouTube. If you just type in Jocko Podcast, a lot of his great quotes and a lot of his uh, podcasts are available here for free on YouTube. Now, the first quote that I pulled out from the book to give you an overview of what we're going to learn today goes something like this. People look for shortcuts, the hack. And if you came here looking for that, you won't find it. The shortcut is a lie. The hack doesn't get you there. Continuing on, he says, And if you want to take the easy road, it won't take you to where you want to be. Stronger, smarter, faster, healthier, better, and free. To reach goals and overcome obstacles and become the best version of you possible will not happen by itself. It will not happen cutting corners, taking shortcuts, or looking for the easy way. There is no easy way. There is only hard work, late nights, early mornings, practice, rehearsal, repetition, study, sweat, blood, toil, frustration, and discipline. Discipline. There must be discipline. Discipline the root of all good qualities, the driver of daily execution, the core principles that overcomes laziness, lethargy, and excuses. Discipline defeats the infinite excuses that say, not today, not now, I need to rest, and I will do it tomorrow. Now, I'm just going to take a quick pause here. How many of us deal with these thoughts, these infinite excuses, as Jocko says? Not today, not now. I need a rest. I'll do it tomorrow. Now, sometimes that's true. Sometimes you do need a rest and you will do it tomorrow. But that's what's so insidious about these excuses is that they could be true. It's not easy to determine whether they are true or they're not true. And they're just an excuse. And that's kind of the insidious part about it. Continuing on, he says, what's the hack? How do you become stronger, smarter, faster, healthier? How do you become better? How do you achieve true freedom? There is only one way, the way of discipline. And you can just feel kind of the stoic philosophers just bursting out of the words here that Jocko has written. Just amazing. You can feel the power in the words that he's writing. You can feel the power, I believe, because he's a true embodiment of a lot of these principles. And that's why we, you know, are so enamored by uh, Jocko and a lot of the teachings that he's putting forth in this book. Now, Jocko is a powerful force of accountability and permission. That's what I see him as. Accountability in the way that we love superstar athletes. They show us what's possible with the human potential. Even if we might not be gifted enough to play on their level, we know how hard they have to work and the discipline that it might take to get there. Jocko is not only that successful in his own particular domain, but he's also very good at getting the message across so that you can and should have that level of work ethic and discipline as well. Helps you keep accountable when you can see someone else living the life that you might like to live. Now, he's also a very powerful force of permission. People in our lives tend to tell us that we shouldn't beat ourselves up or maybe even tell us to relax a little bit. Especially if you're an entrepreneur, you might run into things like this or sentiments like this coming from family members, friends, colleagues. Uh, you might hear this sort of thing all the time. And they are right some of the time. And again, that's why it's so insidious. It's not easy to determine when they might be right and when they might be wrong. But who is there to tell us the other side of the coin? Who's there to tell us to push through? And who's there to tell us that we could have tried harder or a different way or made a different plan or that we shouldn't have given up so quickly? 
To me, Jocko is the other side of that coin. And I know for me, it's a welcome message because it's giving me permission to work harder, be more disciplined, and ask more of myself. It's giving me that other side of the coin where sometimes I do need to rest, but other times I need to get after it and and push through and have a little bit more discipline. Now that's what we're going to be learning today. You can see that I have four main points here uh, that I pulled from the book. The two gray points are going to be our main highlighted points. I recommend that you stay tuned for those two. I think those two points are the most important points of the entire field manual. Now quickly introduce you to mind mapping. If you're new here, you can get the most out of these mind maps by following along. Find the process of how I actually go about creating these mind maps plus all 50 plus mind map books, templates that I've done uh, so far on this channel, including this one. It's all at the link down below. Following along is going to help you learn more. It's going to help you remember better and apply these books to your life, which is actually one of our main points today about doing rather than just spending all of your time learning. Now, this first point that we're going to talk about is called end. And the quote goes like this. Something I saw in combat that I later tried out to train out of people was the tendency to relax once the primary objective of a mission was complete. I tried to train that out of them because you can't relax until the entire mission is complete. In training, we always attack the platoons hard on their primary objective, but we always attack them even harder after they left their main target. Once the platoons were patrolling back to the base when their minds had already gone home and turned off. So what he's saying here is they have maybe a, a main objective with their platoon. A platoon is kind of a training platoon that he would be in charge of training. Now, they go and they do their main mission, and on the way back home, they would set up another trap for them, another trick, something that's going to throw them off kilter. Because, as he said, their minds had already kind of turned off. They had already returned home. Continuing on, he says, That's when we would bring it to them, hit them hard with mayhem, so they would develop the attitude and the muscle memory to keep going until the end. And even when they got back to base, we would retask them so they had to begin planning again. It wouldn't stop. That's the mentality that we wanted to instill in them. Some more of the uh, mentality, he says, it is never finished. You always have to do more. Another mission, another task, another goal. And the enemy is always watching and waiting, looking for that moment of weakness, looking for you to exhale, set your weapon down and close your eyes, even just for a moment. And that's when they attack. So don't be finished. Be starting. Be alert. Be ready. Be attacking. Be relentless. Let the enemy stop. Let the enemy rest. Let the enemy finish. You don't finish. Don't stop. Don't rest. Not until the enemy is completely destroyed. And even then, turn your focus inward on yourself and take the opportunity not to rest, but to make yourself better, faster, smarter, and stronger. Because with those goals, Nothing is ever finished. Now, these are really great quotes. I don't want you guys to go and think that Jocko never sleeps. I want you to realize that he's just providing the other side of the coin. We've already been taught so much about rest, and and it's instilled in us from a very early age. Jocko is giving us the other side of the coin. So even though we might not be fighting the same battles on the same level as Jocko was during his uh, time with the Navy SEALs, we're all fighting at least one thing, at least in my mind. And that thing is what Stephen Pressfield would call resistance. When you have to do work, it potentially takes the form of procrastination, distraction, or anything getting in your way. I actually did uh, a book review on the War of Art, Uh, And that's Stephen Pressfield's book all about the muse and all about resistance. I recommend that you go and check that book out if you don't know about resistance. A very enlightening book. When you want to exercise, resistance might be laziness, excuses, or perhaps even junk food. Now, the battle of resistance never stops. Resistance is incredibly hard to overcome in the first battle. The first few times that you go to the gym are always going to be the hardest. 
But Jocko points out something here that myself and many of my clients have missed for many, many years, especially when I first got started into personal development. It was very easy to think that resistance only happened in the beginning. But the real battle of resistance is time, and that battle never ends. When you get over the initial resistance, you've accomplished your main objective. But that's when resistance gets a little bit sneaky. When you relax, that's when it throws something at you that you weren't expecting. And now that you know about this little trick that resistance tries to play on us, you just have one job. You need to constantly be vigilant. Like the soldiers, the SEALs that Jocko was training, don't stop being alert after the first objective is finished. Quite often my job as a coach is to work with people through their resistance. Perhaps they might be struggling at the very start, where they're just first trying to get into the gym, they're first trying to start their business, they're first trying to get into personal development. But I would say equally as often, or perhaps even more often, these people have succumbed to resistance in the middle of their fight. Maybe they let their guard down and resistance snuck up on them as it tends to do. If that sounds like a place that you might be in right now, I invite you to click the link down below for a sample coaching session with me. Now, that's a completely free session. There's absolutely no obligation. I would love to work with you to get through that resistance and have you ready for anything and everything that might be coming your way. And with that, we're going to move on to our next main point, which is all about choice and the choices that we make. The quote goes like this. What is more important, nature or nurture? In my opinion, it's neither. To me, it's not about nature or nurture. It's all about choice. The people who are successful decide that they are going to be successful. They make that choice and they make other choices. They decide to study hard and they decide to work hard. They decide to be the first person to get to work and the last to go home. They decide they are going to take on the hard jobs, take on challenges. They decide that they are going to lead when no one else will. They choose who they are going to hang around and they choose who they will emulate. They choose to become who they want to become. They aren't inhibited by nature or nurture. They overcome both. And I will tell you something else. It is never too late to make that choice. You are never too old to decide where, where you are going to focus your efforts and push to make the most out of every situation. So think not about what you've been through and where you are or where you were. Think about where you're going and choose. Choose to make yourself smarter, stronger, and healthier. Choose to work out and to study and to eat good food and to keep your mind clean. Don't let your nature or nurture make yourself. So the way that I view this is that the starting point that we all have and the destination might look different for all of us, but the road is really paved with the choices that we make. See, everyone's dealt a different hand and everyone has a different destination in mind, but the one thing that we can control is our choices. The choice to overcome the hand that we're dealt, the obstacles, the insecurities, and the vulnerabilities that we might encounter along the way. We have the choice to choose our own destination instead of the one that was set out in front of us. Now, what I mean by this is quite often we were conditioned from a young age to get a good job, to uh, follow a certain path, maybe the same path that our parents took, or maybe they told us to take a different path than they took. But what that was, was their choice for us. We were kind of abdicating our own ability to choose in allowing our parents, society, our friends, our peers to set that path out in front of us. And we simply just followed that. And instead, we want to choose our own path. We want to choose our own destination. And that choice is made every single day. Choosing to make ourselves smarter, healthier, stronger, to work out, study, eat good food, and keep our minds clean. The choice to become a person of virtue and the choice to act in our own best interests. So here's the little exercise that I want you to give a try. Next time you find yourself thinking, I can't do this or I'm just not good at that, Ask yourself one question. Why? Likely, your mind will say something like this. I was never good at school. I'm not confident enough. That's too scary. I just can't run for long distance. I'm not meant to be a business owner. 
take some time and challenge those beliefs. Are they true? Or you, have you simply chosen to accept them as true? What might happen if you chose a different belief? What might happen if you chose to follow a different path and change the destination? Our next main point is going to be good. This is one of my favorite points I have ever read in any of the books that I've done for this channel. This quote is just absolutely amazing. What a great way to continue to live our lives with a positive attitude, but with a different twist. You'll see. When things are going bad, don't get all bummed out. Don't get startled. Don't get frustrated. No, just look at the issue and say, good. Now, I don't mean to say something trite. I'm not trying to sound like Mr. Smiley positive guy. That guy ignores the hard truth. That guy thinks a positive attitude will solve problems. It won't. But neither will dwelling on the problem. No, accept reality, but focus on the solution. Accept reality, but focus on the solution. Take that issue, take that setback, take that problem, and turn it into something good. Go forward. And if you're part of the team, that attitude will spread throughout. Finally, if you can say the word good, then guess what? It means you're still alive. It means you're still breathing. That means you've still got some fight left in you. So get up, dust off, reload, recalibrate, re-engage, and go out on the attack. That's just so motivating for me. The main thing that I got from this is that positive attitude won't solve problems, but neither will dwelling on them. Now, I think it might be easy for us to think that Jocko is telling us not to feel disappointment, frustration, or fear. But reading between the lines here, I don't think that's it at all. What he's doing is simply saying that we should, what we should do is acknowledge those feelings, but not let them freeze us. Instead, we should learn, make a plan, and take action. Positive thinking is good, but not when it stops us from acknowledging what we're truly feeling and learning from those situations. Another exercise you could do is think about the last time you had a tough situation. How much time did you spend dwelling on it or freezing? How much time did you spend acknowledging it versus trying to ignore it? Real strength is going to come from acknowledging the tough thing, learning from it, and making a plan and executing. So much of this is not about trying to ignore the things. Positive thinking will tell you to ignore all of the negative. And negative thinking is going to make you uh, ignore all of the positive things. And because of that, you don't have all the information and can't make an accurate plan or learn from any situation. Now, the final quote that I pulled out of the book is do. He says, don't just read this book. Don't just listen to this podcast and don't just watch videos online. Don't just take notes. Don't just study them. Don't just share them with your friends. Don't just plan. Don't just mark your calendar. Don't just get motivated. Don't just talk. Don't just think. Don't just dream. No, none of that matters. The only thing that matters is that you actually do. So, do. This is something that I see a lot of viewers struggling with. Perhaps you're even one of them. They reach out for coaching and immediately we talk about all the amazing books that they've read, what their plan is, and how they just need the motivation to do it. But quite often, they don't have any in-the-field experience. They haven't tried and failed. In fact, they're too afraid to actually try. Now, why might this be? They were told they were too stupid in school, perhaps. They failed in a business venture and are now trigger shy. They've never followed their own path and are afraid where it might lead. So instead of doing, they fill their time with fake action, reading, planning, and watching motivational videos. Having a coach allows people who might be in this situation to stare fear in the face and do anyways. Having someone in your corner who will pick you up when and if you do fall down has been a secret for me forever. That person could be a family member or a friend but we have to be careful because sometimes these people are trigger shy themselves. Better to get yourself someone who has been in the arena, who has the scars to show for it, and who has done the work required. If that sounds like you, I recommend that you click on that link down below and sign up for a free sample session. Thanks for being with me here today, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.